going to be to bat to try to get the guys off the field. The numbers from the four-pitch guy. See me in the high 90s on the fastball velocity. Hey guys, it's now Monday, June 12th, so I'm just reading some Pilgrim's Progress and I'm really loving that Faithful and Christian have linked up at this point where I am in the book. I'm at about 24%. That makes it so much more cozy. That's, that's my kind of cozy when two friends are on the journey together. Kid is watching this baseball game. We're about to go to Santa Rosa, but I just wanted to update you about that. Um, also, there's this hilarious section where Moses chases down one of the Christians on his journey and starts like beating him. <laughs> and it's supposed to be like how the law is. It's helpful for pointing out our flaws, but the law doesn't actually help us to overcome our flaws. That can only be done through Christ, which I thought was it was just a really hilarious illustration. And there was such a good section on shame and what shame sounds like from the world. So good, guys. I'm definitely enjoying this more as it's coming along. So I will show you what we're eating a little bit later today. Okay, bye. I forgot to mention too, we're gonna finally be finishing The Final Gambit, which is the final book in that Hawthorne Legacy series. Finally, I feel like Kevin enjoyed it a lot and I really didn't so I'm excited. We have some other options to start so I'll let you know what we end up reading. So we just finished the doctor's appointment. We're gonna go to a place called Ike's Love and Sandwiches which was recommended by a foodie friend of mine so I'm excited to try them. Um, we finished the final gambit and the ending was a bit long-winded but um, yeah, we're down, we finished it, and Kevin really enjoyed it, so. Um, next we tried Why We Broke Up by Daniel Handler, which I've listened to before, and I thought it was funny when I listened to it in the past, but we started it, we only got 3% in, and I just could not handle the narrator, she's such a snob. <laughs> so, not the narrator, like, the voice narrator, but, like, the <laughs> point of view character. <laughs> Kevin had to add his contribution. Um, so then we started Small Game, I think it's called, which is a thriller. I forget the author's name at the moment, but we'll let you know how it goes. It started off, and I'm interested in the plot, although I, I don't really like the narrator of this one either. <laughs> but um, that's okay. Turn right it's fine. See it's really going to be about a thriller survival y kind of story. So we DNF'd how we, why we broke up. And Small Game is about, it's uh, about a, pretty much a survival reality show that goes wrong. So we're following a character who actually knows how to survive in the wild, but there's also a lot of characters there who don't know how to survive in the wild, and it sounds like a lot of them die. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm intrigued. So we'll let you know how that goes. And in the office, I was reading Moreland Cottage like the whole time we were there. And I just love Elizabeth Gaskell. The way her characters are, her characters are so complex. So it shows how they're different around different characters in the story. And there's also just like observations about life. So we're following a girl who, her name is Maggie, and she's living with a brother who's like overbearing, orders her around, super bossy, and a mother who isn't much better to be honest, just doesn't really treat her very well, and she finds some solace in her neighbors who are actually very rich but kind, and it just reminds me a lot of um, the one with Molly Gibson in it, the one that Kate Howe loves, super, super long one, Stations Wives and Daughters somewhere. I think. It reminds me of that a lot, but that's not a bad thing. <laughs> I just love Elizabeth Gatsby. Thank you, though. Appreciate it. 
I really hate the names of their burgers. Yeah. I know what that is. This is definitely really, really yummy. I really like it. There's a cheese pull on my sandwich. Hi, okay, we're back home now and I am really interested in Small Game by Blair Braverman. That's the name of the author. Um, I think it's a pretty new book because I we just got it at the library I think this year, earlier this year, and I knew about it because of that. So um, yeah, I, I think it's gonna be fun. It's so interesting though because it started off with characterizing the characters of the reality TV series that we're going to be following throughout the book. And so it started off with characterization to me and I feel like we know the characters really well. But when I asked Kev what he thought, 17% in, he was like, yeah, I'm not really into the characters yet. <laughs> so it just made me think. It made me think as well about how Jenny and I often have different opinions and she'll often be like, I need a good, I need good characters. But then the books that she likes, I always tend to feel like, I don't know, maybe they're, I just sometimes feel like they're not as much about the characters. So it's interesting because people will pick up different things about characterization, which I guess is why, I guess reviewing is more subjective than I used to really think because in, for example, the other series that I just finished with Kevin, The Final Gambit, the... What's it called? It's, um... I, I can't remember at the moment. Um, but it's, it's the series of three books about the girl who wins a fortune. She wins access to a fortune and she has to compete with the three grandsons of the man who gave her the fortune. And... Um, she has to like survive in their mansion for a year in order to earn access to the money. And so Kevin really loved that and he said he loved the characters and the puzzles. And to me, the characters were not well developed at all. We spent like almost no time on characterization the way I like to. <laughs> so it's just interesting because we both were like, yeah, we're character readers. <laughs> and we completely disagree on what that means. So, um, but it's fun. It's fun getting to know Kevin's book tastes because when we, when we got married, he, he would say that he used to like reading, but he didn't like reading now. But now here we are actually having discussions about our different perspectives about books. I love it. So I'm really enjoying Small Game. And as far as Ike's love and sandwiches, it was kind of scummy and it smelled like weed. There was only outdoor seating and it was sticky. And <laughs> there was graffiti everywhere. We were worried for the sake of our car. There wasn't much parking. Like it was it was really a bummer on so many levels. Plus it was $50 for two sandwiches and two sodas. That's a lot even for California. <laughs> um, yeah, of course after spending $27 almost on a poke bowl, I shouldn't be surprised that it was $50 for two sandwiches, but regardless, I just, yikes. And there was like kids there eating. <laughs> I was like, how can you guys afford this? I guess it's just a more expensive area than we live in. It's already expensive enough where we live, but it's definitely more affordable here than there. So anyways, all that said, they also had the name of a porn film as one of their sandwiches. So I guess the Ike's love and sandwiches, and, and by the way, the woman in that porn film said, anybody watching this film is watching me being raped. After, even though she said, you know, during interviews when she was a porn star that, you know, everything was fine, she's doing great, she loves her job. She came out later and said I was actually being raped continuously <laughs> and I hated it and it was terrible. So after coming out of the trauma, she recognized that it had been traumatic, but that's, that's something that you often see with porn stars is they don't realize until afterwards how damaging this, how damaging their experience really was. <laughs> so the fact that they had that as one of their sandwich names to me was just like, awesome. So you're like supporting rape. This is not love. This is rape. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. So that really annoyed me. And then 
a lot of their sandwich names were like sexual references, so it just gave me this really kind of crawl. It felt like a creeper store. A lot of the other names of the sandwiches were like sports star names, like Giants, former Giants players a lot of times. And their food was good, but that doesn't change my opinion of them. That I, It feels like I was in like a porn addict store. <laughs> That's what it felt like. I was very uncomfortable there. It was very... I did not feel... I, yeah, I, I did not like it at all. So I will not... I'm not planning to go back there, even though their sandwich was absolutely delicious and I loved the root beer as well. I do not recommend Ike's Love and Sandwiches based on ideological principles. <laughs> so if you don't mind ideological princi principles though, honestly, their sandwiches were really good. So I would recommend them for that. But again, $50 for two sandwiches and two sodas. So anyways, that's my review of Ice Loving Sandwiches and my thoughts on small games so far. And I will let you know what I end up reading for the rest of the week. Bye! Look what we have here! These are going to be ingredients for k Tropathon recipes, I think, mostly. Okay guys, I've got all my things. Some of them may not be recipe stuff. I did order like several books for the library. So it might be a book haul, it might be a food haul. Let's check it out. By the way, it is Tuesday, June 13th. So we already have way too much footage for only being two days into the week. But I'll try to be good the rest of the week. I can only update you when it's absolutely necessary. Oh, okay, no wait. These are some tank tops that Kevin got me, actually. I'm excited to try these. I love tank tops because it gets hot in the summer and I have to walk outside every day, all weather, no matter what the weather is, because I have to walk every day for my foot, unless it's a really bad day for my foot, such that I can't walk. Um, and I can't use truck books. We've tried. They don't work for me. So anyways, I have been reading Pilgrim's Progress. I'm 100, I reached 100 pages in. Yay. Okay, let's see what the next thing is. What on earth? Oh, this might be oyster sauce maybe. Excited to check it out. So Victoria has finished some of the books that she's been working on and we're now both reading Moreland Cottage. So we're probably going to talk about that in Moby Dick because she started that too. I can't focus on Cloud Cooper Land until I get a little farther in Pilgrim's Progress. Okay, yes. This is the oyster sauce. Excellent. This is the kind that I saw. What are their names? Um, there's a recipe that I am going to be making like pukpuki with. Oh, here we go. If I look up jajangmyeon. I'm kind of thinking I might make jajangmyeon as well. Erin and Claire, that's the website. They used this kind. So this is the kind that I ordered. I'm surprised that I didn't have oyster sauce. I have like fish sauce. I have like lots of Asian sauces, but I never have had oyster sauce, even though that's more of a common one, I feel like. Okay, let's see what the next thing is. So I think the oyster sauce will be for this jajang Okay. Oh. I saw them some time. Okay. What is this? Oh, this is the black bean paste stuff. Ooh, yay. Okay. I also ordered the black bean paste brand that Erin Claire ordered. At least the packaging looked the same, except the video was like two years old. So this little image here had changed slightly, but here's the Jiajang Ma Xinlin. Tunga Tunjang. Okay, I, I don't know what all that is. Mashinen means delicious. <laughs> I think I know that. The grammar I'm not entirely sure of, but Mashi Ta means delicious. It's like the adjective sort of. It's like a verb that means delicious. <laughs> it's kind of hard to explain. But anyways, so I got two of those. What else did we get? Okay. Ah, oh, yes. The tashi penbu, it's a type of dried seaweed, in order to make the broth. You're supposed to use this, and you're supposed to use dried anchovies to make broth. And then this is 
We ordered a lot. We did a huge haul. It was like a lot of money. Um, this is, whoa, this is a weird one. It's a little cup measuring cup because I keep breaking them. I break these all the time and they're like $10 each. So we finally found a new place to put them where hopefully I won't break them. Okay, that's it. Okay, I'll talk to you later in the week. <laughs> Bye. Hello there, guys. I'm making some kimchi bokumbap, so I thought I would show you how I'm doing that. Kimchi bokumbap is kimchi fried rice. I've just recently started putting kimchi back into my diet, even though it's not low FODMAP, because you can, you're supposed to eat it in small amounts. So I can eat it in small amounts and be okay. So kimchi is nice because it doesn't like go bad. You don't have to buy a whole head of it, like with broccoli or cauliflower. So I just cut up some chicken. So I'm gonna get that frying in the frying pan in some oil. And I'm gonna put um, some seasonings that I had marinating in the chicken. Like um, I had some ginger and garlic and onions in here. So I'll just pour a little bit of this fermenting juice in there to keep it juicy. And then I'll be right back. Got the chicken sizzling in the pan alongside some cauliflower because I had some grains. I had a lot for breakfast, a lot of grains for breakfast. So I really wanted some veg. So probably a little bit too much cauliflower, but hopefully it doesn't kill me. <laughs> okay, so we're going back to the kimchi now. So um, here I've got my a little bit of sugar and a little bit of pepper. And I'm going to stick my kimchi in there and just cut it up directly in the bowl rather than on a board. As I cut up my kimchi, I've been listening to, he, this is um, your favorite auntie's podcast, which I mentioned in my last weekly vlog. They are so great guys. I highly recommend them if you're looking for a great Christian, po Christian podcast. And I've got almost enough kimchi, I need a little bit more. So the Aaron and Claire recipe calls for a half of a tablespoon of the hot peppers, and I just was like, no, we are not, we are not killing my stomach today. Not this day. Yeah, I think it'll be spicy enough without that. If I need a little extra spice, I can always, whew, okay, there we go. <laughs> I can always just add some gochujang at the end. Okay, wow, oyster sauce is, is thick. <laughs> so I'm doing though a half of a tablespoon of the other things. Oyster sauce and soy sauce. And then I'll just add my rice. And I had some brown rice cooked, so that's what I'm gonna use. All right, so I dumped my kimchi in here in real talk. You see all those burn bits? That's because I burned the chicken and cauliflower a little bit. <laughs> because I had the heat on too high. Um, but that's okay. I uh, trick boiled some vinegar in the pan and then dumped some baking soda into it and it bubbles up everything that gets stuck to the pan. Like my favorite trick. And I don't use nonstick pans for this reason. I get so impatient. I don't know if it's because I have an electric range or what, but I am way too impatient to let things cook on low all the time. <laughs> So anyway, I'm gonna stick my rice in here. All right, this is exciting. I'll put a little rice in. I don't need a bunch. Just enough to make it, to remind myself that this is supposed to be fried rice. But I think it's just about done. So I'm super excited about this. And while I'm waiting for this to finish up, I just thought I would tell you I did start Cloud Cuckoo Land last night on the video that I posted yesterday, which was my weekly vlog for last week, uh, Victoria was like, I'm ready to start Cloud Cuckoo Land anytime. Just let me know when you're ready. So I was like, okay, let's do it. Um, and I read a bunch of Pilgrim's Progress this morning. And so I feel like I'm gonna be okay with Pilgrim's Progress. I'm like 40%, a little over 40%. And I think if I keep going at the same pace, I should be able to finish Pilgrim's Progress. Um, so, I, I feel good about starting this. The style is easy to read, and um, I think there's going to be a lot of perspectives, though, and a lot of different timelines, like times. One of the perspectives is set in 2020, and another one is set, like, I think in the future? And there's this reference to, like, 
do you all believe all the legends, you know, do you believe the legend of humans walking on the surface of the earth with the beasts where birds are flying above them? Isn't that crazy? What a legend, you know? There's something about that in there, and it's like, when is this set? Because <laughs> clearly it's not set now, even though one of the other perspectives is set in 2020. Okay, I think this is done. It smells really good. Mm. I'm excited. So I'm going to get that out. But also, Victoria mentioned, maybe I'll just add a little water and keep it going. It's on pretty low heat now. Yeah, I think I'll just keep it going for a little longer because the cabbage is a little crunchy still. Not that that's bad, but um, I don't like a ton of crunch in my veggies. I like them to be very soft and easily digestible, especially veggies like cabbage and pulpar. So anyways, um, she, Victoria also mentioned that it's kind of a thing about this author's style. Who's the author? Anthony Doerr, who wrote All the Light We Cannot See. His style is to kind of describe things using other things that he's described. <laughs> and I thought that was such an apt way to describe his style because in the very, here, I'll just like show you. So on the first page, <laughs> he describes this thing called, um, what's her name? Sil Sybil. It's covered up right here, but this is Sybil. Sybil is a robot who just like floats in the air. And then in the next paragraph, he says, he mentions a multi-dimensional treadmill, the size and shape of an automobile tire. And how would that thing work? How would a treadmill of that size and shape actually work? The only way we would know how it works is by knowing that Sybil is a... He doesn't even have to describe how it works because he already described Sybil, a robot hanging in the air, floating. So this treadmill, obviously, it just floats in the air and you can run on it. <laughs> so I thought that was a really clever way of describing it without describing it. Anyways, that's it for now. I'm gonna eat my food before it burns. And if at any time they be put to the worst, he, if possible, comes in to help them. And of him it is said, the sword of him that layeth at him cannot hold. The spear, the dart, nor the habergen. Whale sighting! They're in my yard today. Yay. Look at that guy. Look at that handsome guy. Oh my gosh, he's so cute. Did you see how much bigger he got when he fluffed his feathers? <laughs> I can't get enough of the quail. Hey guys, it is now Thursday, June 15th. So um, I got some book mail and I was gonna open it here, but apparently I don't have scissors. Okay, yes, yes I do. <laughs> I thought they were gonna be like easy to find. So I'm gonna open this book mail. Um, this is very exciting. So while I'm doing that, I just had a really encouraging doctor visit. So that's exciting. I've been implementing some new physical therapy stretches. Probably I'm gonna be needing to get some pain relief shots before I can really make progress in PT, but it's just exciting to be back in PT. So tomorrow we will have PT. Um, and lately, I've been obsessively watching this show on Netflix called Siren. Uh, what's it called? Siren Survive the Island. It's a Korean like survival show on an island. And it has teams of like police women and um, coast guard ladies stunt women like these really hardcore women and they're all firefighters they're all like teaming up on their own teams and they're trying to beat each other in this competition and guys it was so entertaining i can actually watch it in korean and sort of follow along because they're not really speaking with any sort of complex complexity Ooh, okay so the book that i got is moby taking pictures which i got uh after matt mentioned this matt um 
he, I don't know how you pronounce your last name, Matt, but he was on Reading Sprints, our last Reading Sprints. So I ordered this from my library because I was so intrigued. He mentioned it, he tagged us in his story. So I'm super excited to go through all of the illustrations of Moby Dick because I am enjoying Moby Dick. I hit the 40% mark of Moby Dick last night, as well as the 40% mark of Pilgrim's Progress. So making progress in both, Loving Saved, the memoir by the war reporter. Can't wait to check this out. And that's mainly all that I need to tell you, except I did figure out my, I, ha I was having some problems with my laptop to where I wasn't sure I was gonna be able to post my last reading vlog, but I got some help from IT at my work and they showed me how to clear my cache, which I did not know how to do. There's like five caches that I had never ever cleared out before on my laptop and he showed me how to do that. So now I should never run out of space again, I hope. <laughs> I should be able to clear out the proxies and clear out everything that my editor is creating. So that's really exciting. Yay for no more editing problems. Okay, that's all today, and I will talk to you tomorrow. I think we're gonna go to Super Burger tomorrow. Super excited for it. Uh, a little bit of laundry because I wanted to watch. Hello there, County Library. This is Christy Lewis from the Branch, and today we're gonna be talking about Tonyagen Mayu Himbaga Sam. Sams are like lettuce sandwiches with lots of toppings and you're supposed to eat them all in one go. So I'm having hamburger in my Sams because I'm so American. <laughs> um, I just wanted to tell you I'm really enjoying Saved by Benjamin Hall. I just got it on audiobook from the library which was a fantastic break because there was long lines. <laughs> and now that I'm reading Cloud Cuckoo Land, I don't really have time to read this physically, so. Yeah, he's talking about his early days as a journalist and how difficult it was for him to like find a story and some of his like big breaks, you know, like meeting people at parties and stuff. It's really interesting. So, and I thought I would show you my hamburger Sam. So I'm gonna lower you a little bit here. Super burger. The child in me rejoices that they have Where's Waldo on all the tables. So they have Ozla, the wizard, Wanda, and Wolf. Found Wenda. We changed our mind and decided to sit outside. So now we're on the bench. I got a chili cheeseburger with bacon because I'm so healthy. And <laughs> a peanut butter shake with Oreo mixed in. What did you get, Kev? Did you get like a hot dog and french fries and a Butterfinger shake? Yum. what I want because I would never give up milkshakes from Super Burger. So we're about to head home now and AT's just released a new video last night. I've already seen some of the video because I wanted to like make sure I was supporting them but I haven't had a chance to listen to it yet because if I did that first thing in the morning I would be destroyed the rest of the day so <clears throat> can't wait to get home and listen to Bouncy. Hey guys, it's now June 17th on Saturday and I am just, I don't know why I'm working so hard on my hair today. It's not going to be a filming day. I don't need to work, but I just decided I'm going to 
curl my hair. So I've already done this side. <laughs> my hair does not stay curled. I don't know if it's because it's summer right now or what, but I'm trying not to touch it too much, but I think it's just too long and my hair doesn't really stay curled when it's this long, but Kevin really likes it long. So I'm gonna keep it long and just do my best to style it. So, and today I'm watching lots of vlogs. Two of my booktube besties put up vlogs today. So we got a Victoria weekend reading vlog, yay. And we have right below here, a Tiffany weekend vlog. So t uh, Tiffany week weekly vlog. Tiffany's doing weekly vlogs now and I'm so psyched. Um, really leaning into the vlog love lately. It's just so fun to see what everybody's up to and yeah, most people actually finish books in weekly vlogs, unlike me. <laughs> so I haven't been working really hard on books the last couple nights because I've been working on Korean instead, which is something that I was doing more uh, previously, like a couple before the last month or two. That's something I was doing, mostly working on Korean, not reading as much. But I really can't afford to do that right now. <laughs> I really need to work on my actual books. So I'm gonna be doing that um, probably later today. I'm gonna read some of Moreland Cottage because actually today, um, Kate's Moreland Cottage Patreon meet is today. And then Monday, we're gonna have another meeting. That's, I think I'm gonna try to go to today's meeting, but I haven't finished the book. I'm still I'm still at 35%. I just haven't read. So, um, but I have a feeling that a lot of my friends are gonna be going to the meeting this morning at 11 a.m. my time. So I think I'm gonna go anyways, just to see what they thought, because it's more fun to do it live than to watch the recordings. Um, but hopefully I won't get too spoiled. <laughs> But honestly, it's less about, you know, the actual story. Wow, yeah, that's right in the way. Um, it's less about the actual story, more about the writing with Elizabeth Gaskell. Not that she's not, she's a great storyteller, but I can just enjoy it on a writing level. So I guess if I get spoiled, not a big deal. So those are kind of my plans for the rest of the weekend. Finish Morling Cottage. But I'm falling behind on Pilgrim's Progress again, so I need to do that. And in the evenings, I've been super sleepy, but I've just been mostly reading the manga, the Pop Carry Diaries. I think Tiffany just read that in the vlog that she just posted, so I'm excited to see her talking about it because I know she really liked it. So, yay. But the Pop Carry Diaries is such a fun manga series. So that's what I've been reading at night rather than Moby Dick for the last two nights. And I'm just loving it. I'm almost done with the volume that I'm on, which I believe is volume five or six. So yeah, we're investigating another, another murder, <laughs> obviously. I just love how Sherlockian it is. So anyways, that's kind of what's going on. And I will talk to you. I, this might be the last update, but I'm gonna try and finish Moreland Cottage and then update you. Oh, and I do have reading sprints tomorrow morning with um, Krista from Mix and Jams because we're doing Pilgrim's Progress reading sprints. So I might bring you along for that as well. I hope you'll, I hope by the time you're seeing this, you have joined us for that and enjoyed our sprints. Super exciting. So anyways, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs> Bye. I've been taking notes on the vocabulary of BTS in the idol games. That just your name is mud to them. They just what a low opinion Edward had of Maggie and that All done. Hey guys, I just can't believe I'm doing this because I've had so much sugar already this week, but I saw some really delicious looking watermelon at the store. So I'm gonna make a Korean recipe that I just heard of. It's called Hwache, watermelon punch. Everybody's for you now. 
So that's Cook Kim. That's one of the channels that I'm recommending to K-Drapathon people for easy recipes on TikTok. So basically, he cuts open a watermelon and kind of scoops it around so that the watermelon is kind of slushy and then adds milk, Sprite, and fruit cocktail. <laughs> so we're gonna try it. It sounds like really yummy for like a summery recipe. I don't really like fruit cocktail actually, but you know what? I'm gonna go with it and we're gonna try it out. <laughs> I'm adding a little extra pineapple because I just prefer pineapple, I guess. <laughs> and I've seen a lot of Koreans, I've seen Koreans using pi canned pineapple in recipes as well. So I think it's probably fine. Chamukusumida! <laughs> It's fizzy. <laughs> I also just finished while I was making this A Brightness Long Go by Gaga Roque. And it was so good. I just, I love this so much. So I wanna try his Chinese fantasy series next, as far as he goes. But first, <laughs> I wanna get back to Game of Thrones because I was Get really getting into book two when I took a break to read like Jenny. And then I was like, no, I'm gonna finish right this long ago before I go back to Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones could have counted for Jenny too though. I would really love to end the vlog here so I could just get this vlog out to you guys and work on something else. However, I already have a plan for what I want to do next week. So I need to finish Moreland Cottage before I end this vlog. So that's gonna be my goal for the rest of tonight. It's now. 6.30 on Saturday. Friday? Saturday. So I have the rest of today and tomorrow to finish Moreland Cottage. That when their guilt and fear is gone, their desires for heaven and happiness die, and they return to their course again. Two, another reason is they have sleep. Hey guys, so I finished some sprints on Chris's channel and read quite a bit of Pilgrim's, well, not quite a bit. It was probably over 20 pages of Pilgrim's Progress, which is good. I reread and listened to some parts of it. Sorry, I'm trying to unlock my phone so I can look at how far I am now. So I am currently, and now my phone is restarting the app. Regardless, I made some progress and I'm enjoying it. I especially loved, okay, I'm at 52%. I especially loved this section where Christian is going over a river with, what's the guy he's with right now? Hopeful. That was very profound. And um, I didn't realize that they were going to die halfway through this journey. So what's the, what's the other halfway going to be? Like, this is turning into Dante. <laughs> um, so really enjoying this. I probably won't read any more of this for this vlog because I need to actually end this vlog like very quickly. But I did read some more of Moreland Cottage by Elizabeth Gaskell. So where am I there? I am currently at 60% through Moreland Cottage. So going to read some more of that while I'm sitting out on the deck. Hopefully finish it. I don't know if I'll be able to finish all 40%, but loving that so much. Loving them both. I feel like I've already described what they're both about. So I'm just updating you about my progress and what I'm loving. So, but yeah, I, I, I really love Moreland Cottage. A lot of the people in Kate House Patreon were very like middle of the road about it feeling, but I think just the way Elizabeth Gaskell writes like domestic interrelations that I will always love her for that because it's fascinating how people who are living together, their interrelations and how the people in the neighborhood see them and how all their friends see them. And it's just so interesting. Like she, she really convinces me of different perspectives and I love that. And then overall, of course, there's her perspective on the situation, which is usually different from the characters. And you can really see how these characters get into a funk sometimes in their brain. There's, um, a there's, 
a, a good father character in this. Again, it reminds me so much of Wives and Daughters. Like so many of the characters are just like, this is like Wives and Daughters, but Wives and Daughters was longer and more fleshed out. But there's a male character who's like a father figure in this book and he's really getting focused on making sure that his son is gonna have riches and wealth and opportunity in the world and meanwhile the son is like not interested or following along with that. He's more interested in other things than the pursuit of wealth and stuff and station. So um, it's just, it's so good. It's so good. So anyways, I'm gonna keep, yeah, reading and hopefully update you at the end of this vlog by the end of today. Also, also, I just wanted to add, I just learned that Krista is not only an ISFJ, as am I, but also an Enneagram 9. So we are the same person. That is wild to me. I did not realize that, but it totally makes sense, I think. Hey guys, okay, it is now 5.11 p.m. So I finished Moreland Cottage, no problem this afternoon. And uh, yeah, that's, that's mainly it. That's what I wanted to tell you because this vlog is already very long. So it was so good though. Like the ending was so unexpected. People in Kate Howe's Patreon were talking about how it was unexpected and I agree with that, but I loved it. It was so good guys, definitely recommend. Although maybe not as like a first gospel, I guess. I don't know, people who were reading it had mixed feelings even though I like just loved it unreservedly. <laughs> there were other things that I also loved unreservedly by her and people like those better. So I guess that's not maybe where I'd say to start, but regardless, I loved it. So I, I've never not loved anything from her. I, I think I've given everything I've read from her like at least four stars. <laughs> so anyways, um, I also, I have been listening to the Benjamin Hall book saved and he was kind of an idiot when he was younger like he was like lying to his girlfriend and her father about all the dangerous things he was doing and stuff so for him i i'm kind of irritated by him as a person but i'm still really interested in his story so i'm gonna keep listening and maybe he gets better as he gets older i don't know we'll see um and i also wanted to comment as well that um, in that section that I mentioned earlier about the river in um, Pilgrim's Progress, it just reminded me so much of, so the, Christian is really struggling with death is what's happening in the river. And the horrors of death are just really weighing on him and it's making him question his faith. And it just really, I know that a friend of ours passed recently, a friend of my mom's and she like came to our wedding, Kevin and mine. and. Um, it was, I think, a really hard death. We still don't know why she died or how. It was, she just died at home, so we're hoping that they're able to figure out what happened to her and give the family some closure, but I think even in a situation like that where death is so hard, I think God's got you, you know? <laughs> I don't think salvation is at risk in a situation like that. That, that would be my, because we're in God's hand, you know? If we have given our lives over to God and asked Jesus to save us, nothing can take that away from us. So nothing can take us away from him. So um, that scene was very like moving to me though, because I know like C.S. Lewis, he, before he was a Christian, a friend of his who wasn't a Christian died and he was like helping his friend till the end. And it was such an agonizing, terrifying process that I know that affected him as well as an atheist at the time. He he never could shake off the horror of that. And I think that also played a factor into why he became a Christian. So death really, that is very impactful on a person's life. So I just, I'm glad that we're reading Pilgrim's Progress. I feel like it's difficult to read. Every page is a bit of a struggle to be honest, but there are really, really poignant moments in it. And I'm really glad that I'm reading it and I'm glad that Krista and I are reading it and that you all who are reading it along with us are also reading it. So anyways, um, and I also wanted to mention that I did get into that class. I forgot to mention this previously. There was a class that I was trying to get into last week and I got into it. So my first class was this Thursday. So it's Thursday mornings. It's 7.30 a.m. Um, so it's a watch class of Hello Jadu. So I wanted to mention that too because I forgot to, but I'm really excited about it. I'm doing well with my... I haven't studied yet today. That's probably what I need to do next, is go do my studying, so. 
anyways okay i'll talk to you guys a little bit later probably tomorrow start tomorrow's next week's vlog i'm excited about next week's vlog because i have some plans all right let me know in the comments down below anything you want to talk about i want to hear about your week okay